You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Ricky Baez. Once again, Ricky, how are you? I got coffee. It's Friday. It's a beautiful day already. It is a beautiful day, um, but it's a it's a hot day, and we're in December, a couple weeks out from Christmas. Um, this is a bad time to be in Florida. Normally, it's a great time. <laughs> right now, it's just putting up Christmas lights, sweating, not not fun. <laughs> Normally, those two things don't go in the same sentence, sweating and putting up Christmas lights. No, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. No, I don't like it at all. I want snow on the ground. There you go. Until there's snow on the ground, then you're like, I want to go back to Florida. That's exactly how I am. Right. Yeah, I guess you, you you want what you don't have. So um, the, or the grass is always the snow is always whiter, I guess. <laughs> is that how to say it? Is that terrible? Would that be yeah, this... <laughs> would that be a dad joke? That's bad. The snow is always whiter when there's a lot of porta potties. <laughs> what? I don't even. I don't even get that. Yellow snow, really? Porta potties? Oh. Nobody has. Oh, to when there are snow. a lot of right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, look, man, what we're we're this? we're back. Um, I asked you to come back on today on um, the Finding Careers in podcast because we have some questions that have come in. People who uh, are interested in in. Um, Little help with their careers then, and so sure. let's do a little Q and A today. Are you up for that? I'm I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Great. So they're all layoff centric, unfortunately, because that has been not only in the news; it's been happening quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, before we get into that, but from a trend standpoint, do you think it's you know here we are a week into December, coming up at the end of the year, a lot of lot of activity. Um, in terms of, of you know, budget cycles and there's just a natural closure that happens in the calendar year. And, you know, sometimes you know, companies have a fresh start in January. What, what do you think the trend looks like in the immediate future? You have a thought on that? I mean, I hate to be pessimistic here, but I'm a realist. It's going to continue happening. It's going to continue happening. You and I have been talking about this since the beginning of the year because there was record breaking, like break next break breakneck speed hiring uh just about a year ago and we called it the pendulum's not coming the other way and unfortunately there's going to be more it started i'm a, I'm a little bit surprised though because first it started with the tech industry and now amazon i i know we talked about it on the past few shows amazon at a time where this is their christmas they're they're laying people off and that's a tall tale sign of what's what's coming ahead unfortunately yeah well um they hired a lot, right? So it's it's so much of what we're seeing is a result of the, the impact or the reaction to COVID. And every business um, it was impacted differently. Some good, you know, yeah. Amazon being one. Uh, I, I, you know, online ordering really exploded in that time, and they had to hire a lot of people to support that. So do you think it's just things normalizing, or people getting out, going back into retail stores more? Um, even though Amazon's future, needless to say, is is safe. <laughs> Thank oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, you know, we're never going back to, to retail the way it used to be, but it was shut off altogether. And Amazon Amazon was a beneficiary of that for a period of time. But I think you, know, you just like work and it, it, people don't want to be isolated exclusively. It's not healthy. So I think people having the opportunity to go back into stores is um, has to be you know, hurting them a little bit. That's a good point, too, right? Because, yeah, they they had to really staff up for the pandemic because they, you know, when that happened, they were going to be more involved in people's lives than before. And uh, that not needing that much of a staff, a combination with people wanting to get out. Yeah, yeah. It, I really think that has a lot to to do with it also, Pete. But nonetheless, there's still going to be some people out there who are going to be wondering what to do. Um, with the uh, in case they get laid off or if they were laid off, what are they going to do? So it's, it's almost like we had that question come in. Um, did we? we, we which, I think we, we did, did, right? <laughs> so so let's start with that one. Uh, yeah, okay. The question was, I, I've been laid off. What should I do? Um, but that was a question. That was a question. Oh, got it. That, that, that was asked um, via our, our um, mailbox. And so Look, if this is here's the good news. Let's let's start with that. The yeah. bad news is you've been laid off. The the good news is, uh, in the in the history of you know job openings in in the U.S., we 
this is still a good time to be a job seeker. It doesn't feel that way when you when you read the news. It doesn't feel that way when you see the reports of constant layoffs. But there's 10.3 million openings in the U.S. right now. And that is a historically large number. If you look at the last 15 years, uh, the data shows that 10.3 is about twice what is the the norm. And so there's a lot of jobs. So that that's number one. Um, number two, your competition is not um, as severe as it would historically have been as well. So there's about 6 million job seekers right now. Unemployment is at 3.7%, which is, which is really low. So just based on that alone, there are more jobs than there are job seekers. So yeah. by default, that means it's, it's a, it's a pretty good time to look for a job. Now, unfortunately, the, that's the good, the bad is back to um, you know, the the comment about the end of the year. You know, a lot of things slow down in terms of hiring and being in staffing uh, for a long time. I can say that that is um, you know, a painful thing for for all of us and in, involved in the business of finding new jobs for ourselves or for others. Um, that things grind to a halt. It's natural to understand why. I mean, holidays, vacations. Um, yeah. just a general slowdown, as I mentioned that just the natural end of, of the cycle. So those are things that are working against you, but I, there's more good than bad. That that's my, my first thought on it. And then we'll get into, um, what steps someone should take. What, what do you think about that? So it, it, it's, yes, it's going to continue to happen. It's we're in a great, in, in a great time right now where people have options, the question is how how do you take advantage of those options, or how do you find out what options are available to you? Um, Pete, you're talking to somebody who's been laid off three times in his entire career, so it, it's yeah, it hurts. So I've been there before, um, but the best thing that you can do as an individual, just just holistically going forward, is to always, whenever you take a job, whenever you decide to join an, an organization, always remember you need a plan B. You're never going to be there for the long haul. Let me not say it that way. I don't want to say it like that. Your job is never guaranteed. So you always need to have a plan B. And of course, it's not personal. It's going to be literally business. And that's exactly what it is. Just how an organization needs to make a decision on on laying, lay, um, getting rid of positions and affecting people's lives. That's a business decision. You have to do the same thing for your family in case that happens. So it's going to continue to happen. You just got to be really prepared for it. And I think we're going to go into that here in just a bit. Yeah, well, so I'll give four things that that I've I say often and and have said already on on this podcast and we've written about it. There's a lot that you can find on zengig.com about what specific steps that you can take and and how to how to get there, but I'll I'll review them quickly. The first thing if you've been laid off, you are in assuming you are motivated to uh, be employed again as soon as possible. No, the number one thing you can do is tell everyone. Tell everyone you know Shout it um, as loudly as you can, and you know, friends, family. I even sort of put in a joke like Facebook. You know, even even the people that um, you know you you you're connected to on Facebook who you don't uh, you know you went to high high school with because there's you share 20 other connections, but you don't even remember who they are. Even yeah. those people, yeah. because you never know where that source of um, of of the next opportunity that you uh, that can make you aware of is going to come from and it can come from strange places and it will if you uh, put that information out there for the world so don't be shy about that don't be hesitant at, at times um i know people are and it's look it's not the most comfortable thing to talk about fine but it's about uh, achieving the objective which is to become employed and in a great situation and as quickly as possible and by the way I think it, it's it's an important distinction. It's not about just getting a job. It's about getting a job that you want. And that mm. means options. You, you want as many as you can. So cast a really wide net. And that's what all the advice is. And I'll start with just that one. Tell everyone. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I, I agree with that. And do you know the number one reason why people don't do that, Pete? The number one reason why people don't tell everybody they're embarrassed. Right. Well, oh, sure. Okay. I thought you were going to come up with, there was some, some, uh, <laughs> some trick answer to oh, that. No. <laughs> I'm known for that. Um, no, the, um, 
they're embarrassed. And the reason I know that is because years ago I did a survey as to, you know, if you was put in this situation, how would you react? And the number one reason people don't do that is just embarrassment. And there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Nothing that out of even if you're a private person and this is going to hurt people who are an introvert by nature, who are not used to putting their their business out there, even folks like that, more reason to do so and put something out. Tell if this is the time to tell everybody your business. Right. Because this is it's it's networking is one of the best ways that you can get a job, the quickest way that, that you can get a job aside from just applying outright. So I agree with that 100 percent. So let's carry that networking comment forward and, and say the other things that I recommend immediately, and, and these can all happen within day one, right? You find out, do not wait, do not sit on it. Don't you know? take time to think about it, tell everyone, and then do the same thing on LinkedIn. Uh, put that you're hiring. There's a, um, a little uh, mark you can put on your profile to say, I'm not hiring, sorry, that I'm you're, looking. Um, Available. You know, you're, you're looking, I think it says looking for work. Yep. Put that on there. Recruiters live on LinkedIn. They will uh, they will find you that way. Connect with everyone you know there. And once again, it, you're casting a wide net here. So you want to, um, if you're not a big LinkedIn user, now is the time to uh, to get on it. Invite your your contacts. Um, and you, you don't have to be they don't have to be close contacts either. Don't don't right. don't feel that way. This is this is a business networking tool. It's not. It's not Facebook, right? Where you should, other than the, the high school people that I mentioned that we all, we all know, everyone knows what I'm talking about with that, I, hope, yeah. I think, um, knows, yeah. at least if you're our age, right? That uh, um, these people <laughs> appear and you, yeah. you're you not sure who they were, but um, they, that you don't have to know on LinkedIn. If there's a, if there's a, um, some commonality with what you do for business, if it just makes sense that you may encounter each other somewhere, go ahead and throw the connection out there. It can only help. And the worst case scenario is, you know, it doesn't get accepted, which isn't a bad scenario at all. You, you try, try to do that. Update your contact information, update your um, your resume, so to speak, on on LinkedIn, which you need to do anyway if you've been laid off, um, and uh, and put that out there quickly. Can I amend that real quick from my perspective? Sure. Because I have a little bit different point uh, point of view in that. Because you're saying as soon as possible, do not wait. Put it out there. And I agree. You should put out there that, yes, I am open and willing looking for a job right now. But what I would encourage people to do now, what I'm about to say is assuming that you have a little bit of a cushion, which some people do, some people don't financially, and that you're going to receive an average of four weeks of severance. So that gives you about 30 days of cushion from one, you know, one event to the other. So assuming all that is in place. Once you tell everybody, take a step back. I wouldn't want people to start interviewing immediately. This is a great opportunity for you to take a step back, reassess where you are in your career. And this is a great opportunity for you to decide if you want to make a left or go right or continue where you are. Whatever you were thinking about, because I know there's a lot of people out there listening right now who even before they were laid off, they were thinking about starting that side hustle, being a freelancer, going somewhere else, but they were afraid to jump ship to disrupt their their uh, their finances. You know, for, for if this is your if, if this is your story, then guess what? Fate has answered that for you. So this is your opportunity to take a step back, think about what you want to do, strategize on what you want your future to look like. Maybe take 48 hours to really think about what you want to do. It's like I tell people all the time, never go shopping when you're hungry. You're going to come home with a bunch of crap you're not going to want to eat. Well, you are going to eat. Just not good for you. Well, I, yeah, you definitely <laughs> eat it. The, yeah, I, I, I disagree with that, and here's why. Okay. You want to get the ball in motion. So I, I think what you, your point, it, it makes sense. And I do agree with that, that you want to have a chance to consider your next option, uh, provided you have runway to do that. Not, not everyone will, by the way. Yeah. And Correct. I'm a big proponent of not letting any time linger, uh, get, get it, get it in motion it, because it could take, it could take a while. So the odds of you, you know, announcing to the world on LinkedIn today that you're looking for um, a new opportunity and that opportunity materializing and, and you needing to um, you know, make a decision on it all within you know a day or two, that's very unlikely. 
So you're going to have time to think. But part of what I, I truly believe is important in this is to is to give yourself the most exposure and therefore the most options um, to choose between. So the, the more options you have, the more you can really consider what you like, you know, one thing more than, than another. So um, I, I don't think letting grass grow is, is, is that's not something I'd advise. Well, I think we're seeing the same thing you're seeing, you're saying um, communicated immediately, which I agree with that. I'm saying because because once you communicate and still disappear for 48 hours, right, let that communication materialize, let it marinate. And then by the time you come back, you can pick and choose. All I'm saying is don't be too quick. Don't be too quick to jump into something else just because your your income stream was disrupted. This is a great opportunity for you to figure out exactly where you want to go if you've been teetering on it. So, yeah, throw it out there as quickly as possible. Let things materialize. But um strategize let's play a little bit of chess here i think we're saying the same thing i don't know if we are i, I don't know i i, I really are we want... disagree pete uh maybe <laughs> where's the gun do we have a bell for that <laughs> so uh right. but that's okay look you the main thing is to take take the steps and yeah. to not do it with with much delay um let's at least you know say that we and it. and look it's not you, by putting your information out on LinkedIn, just like a resume should be an evolving thing. It, it should it shouldn't be a static document. As you're having conversations and and encountering new opportunities, you'll continue to hopefully um, uh, spend time improving your profile, improving your mm -hmm. resume, tweaking it along the way. So it's not just but but if let, let's say your LinkedIn profile hasn't been updated in years, you find yourself suddenly on the market. Do not waste any time updating that and and True. again making um recruiters aware and everyone else aware that you're open to uh, taking calls and, and want to hear about opportunities um and because the next thing I'd, I'd recommend is posting your resume on job boards hmm. um a, you know career builder monster indeed linkedin is a job board um i i like to joke that it's a job board that where people can post their resumes without you know, their employer being suspicious right that they're looking for a job um <laughs> that's actually it, which is which yeah Got which it. normally people try to hide that they're doing um <laughs> linkedin's allowed that to be out in the open but go to the other major job boards if you're in a specific niche uh there there's job boards for that too so do not delay and then the last thing i would say is um Again, all within the same immediate time frame. Do not delay in this. Is connect with recruiters yeah. in your uh, geography, in your industry, or your niche, whatever it might be. Um, right now, Zengig is in the process of building this for our website. We don't have it up yet, but um, we're going to have a recruiter match uh, uh, a system that allows people to find recruiters based on their their criteria that they apply. Um, so, work in progress there. I wish it were ready all, um, currently, but the next place I would go in lieu of that is uh, Clearly Rated. Go to clearlyrated.com. It, it's a an independent um, organization that ranks recruiters, um, not ranks them, but uh, rates them based on customer and candidate feedback. So a, wait, wait a minute. There's a Yelp for recruiters? Effectively, yeah. Did not know that. Clearlyrated.com. Oh, I'm yep. going to go in. It used to be called out. Best of Staffing. That, yeah. I think that was, uh, that, it, there was a different, it's the Best of Staffing Award that they give, but they, you know, they give companies a, a rating uh, you know, based on five stars. I'm going to go check that out. Okay. Yeah. So that's a great place. If you don't ha already have relationships with recruiters, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful place to start and you can search by geography or specialty area. Nice. Okay. So that's my advice. That's that's what to do. You've been laid off. Do those things. And and you know, Ricky wants you to chill out for a day or two. Um, <laughs> I want you to get going right away. Yeah, okay. Can I? Can I? Okay. I have to say why I said that. You when can't. You can't up, unring that bell. You said no, it. No, I know. No, no, no. I'm gonna ring it again. I'm gonna ring it again. Here's why. Here's when I um the first time I was laid off. It was it it, it was a new experience for me. And the mistake that I did the first time I was laid off, I 
yeah, I started applying all different ways, all different places, just just to just to keep my my income stream, my revenue stream. And I really wasn't taking a look at whether I was going to be happy there or not. Now, albeit that was at a time where I didn't have the resources or the capabilities to take my time. So that's why I put a caveat on there. But when the second time I was laid off from Darden restaurants, um, I took a couple of days and I went to St. Augustine, just completely shut everything off, went to St. Augustine and mentally reset. I, uh, me personally, that helped me immensely. It it helped me focus on where I wanted to look at next. But that's only possible if A, you get some kind of a severance package or B, you have some kind of a uh, of a cushion for about 30 days to help you do that. So the takeaway from this piece there, Pete, um, focus on making sure you have a cushion, a safety cushion, and always have a resume and always have your 30-second elevator pitch ready to go at a moment's notice. Well, yeah, no. Okay, so notice, it, it, I think maybe this is relevant. I did not recommend applying immediately anywhere um, as, as one of the first things you should do. I'm not saying you shouldn't apply I'm saying that is not one of the more effective things to do. So I would agree to your point that. Yeah. that you just made stopping and applying everywhere um, or doing that immediately. Mm, okay. That's yeah. not going to give you the best. So that, so I'll go one step further and say, don't do that until you've done these other things because it's, it isn't going to be nearly as effective as putting the message out there and being found. Um, sending your resume uh, as one of however many, you know, from a few to hundreds or more for a single job application is a low success rate venture. Um, that's why I recommend working with recruiters uh, right. to, because recruiters will represent you in a way you can't represent yourself. They'll be more aggressive on your behalf. They will, um, they'll do things you as an individual can't do. It's just the way it goes. And not, not to mention, they'll be exposed to jobs that aren't otherwise public. Um, so that's its own conversation. But um, we, we can talk more about that one later. It just hit me. Recruiters are like real estate agents. It just hit me right now. I don't know why I'm making that connection right when you said that, that they're going to fight because you're right, right? It, it is in their best interest and your best interest as well for the, for the recruiter to, to connect you with, with, with your career, your end job where you're going to be happy. Just well, like so yeah. just, just quickly on that, um, recruiters will be given jobs uh, that won't be otherwise public, like I said. Mm -hmm. So you'll expose yourself to a bigger part of the market. And specifically, we're talking about third party recruiters here, not not internal corporate Correct. recruiters. Um, they will find you as well by being posted on by, by your information being posted on job boards or, or, or on LinkedIn, but the third party recruiters will keep that uh, opportunity somewhat private uh, because they don't want the world to know, you know, they don't want their competition to know yep. what they're working on. So you have to somehow be engaged with them to, to find out the opportunity. And I'm not recommending contacting just one recruiter um, that even the biggest recruiters only see a very, a small piece of the overall market, even the you know, billion dollar firms. So connect with all the good ones in your area is all part of this uh, effort of casting as wide a net as possible. So that I, I couldn't, you know, there's no better advice I could give than that. Just I would agree with cover that. all the bases. <laughs> I would agree with that. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. All right. Look, we came to an agreement there and that's good. All right. We're, we're, <laughs> we're progress. All right. So next, next question is, um, about someone who wants to, who's, how do I avoid being laid off? That's, that's the question. Uh, <laughs> how do you avoid? I think that's the second most asked questions right behind the meaning of life. Right. Um, so let's, <laughs> how do I avoid being laid off? Okay, here we go. So you cannot avoid with 100% certainty being laid off, but you could definitely make it more difficult for you to be laid off. You, you here's, oh God, here's a cliche answer. All right, I don't know if you're ready for this, Pete. You have to become invaluable. You have to be the one person that does that one thing that if you're not there, everybody scrambles over. 
right? For example, for example, if you're the only one that knows how to handle, I don't know, let's say uh, workers comp, right? You're the only one and you're amazing at it and you're out for one day and everybody's scrambling, chances are you're not going to get laid off or you're going to be lower on the list of, of jobs that are going to be um, uh, chopped. Remember when, when, when a company and you talk, and this is somebody who's been laid off and somebody who's orchestrated and put together layoff packages. Um, so when an organization says we have to cut 20%, we always look for different, different areas where we can cut what doesn't affect people. If people are affected, that's because we have no other choice, none whatsoever. Right. So and we also take a look at what can the organization do without for a quarter? What can the organization do without for half a year? So that's what I'm saying. You have to become invaluable to the organization, not because they like you, although sometimes that does happen. But if they cannot do without your position in the organization, chances are you're not going to be in the chopping block. So you got to find out what that is in your organization and be great at it. Be right. I, I, I don't have a whole lot to add to, to that because <laughs> I agree with you 100 percent. Be indispensable yeah. um, and be needed. Right. Yes. You said, you know, you, know, you don't it's not about being liked. Sure. That usually goes hand in hand, but be necessary to to the yeah. organization. Um you can't avoid layoffs happening. You, at times, depending on the role you're in and the situation, you can't avoid being laid off. That that's that is a yeah. given. But the layoffs I've been a part of, and when these decisions are being made, uh, there there's there's number. It's numbers based. You know, this department, this organization has to cut so many people. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a hundred. You have to cut twenty. There's a hundred, you have to cut 80, whatever it is. So to be as valuable as possible for whatever organization you are part of is, is the best way to mit mitigate the risk of being laid off. That's right. It would be, it's impossible for me not to think of our quiet quitting conversations right now. It, because we've, we, we talked about that prior to this wave of layoffs happening and saying, do not, you do not want to operate that way mm -hmm. because if the time comes where there is going to be any kind of downsizing, you will be at the top of the list. And right. um, it's better to leave and to be in a situation that you um, want to uh, do your best in and thrive within and, and, and you, that you're happy to be there, right? That that's the goal. Um, So for those of you who are, not at risk of being laid off who aren't um, but are in that quiet quitting mode right now, mm. you know, con consider it, right. Consider you know, maybe if your company was facing a layoff right now and 50% of the team was going to be impacted, consider whether you're part of that list, you know, uh, which side of the list you're on. Yeah. And, and then, you know, up, always proceed accordingly, right? I mean, that's that's what it is. We all have to make these decisions. But what we would encourage everyone to do is to find a, a, an organization, a job um, that's more than just a job you're settle you're, you're you're you settle on. Find one that you really really want to do. That that's the goal. In in that sometimes people don't understand that concept as far as be, being so valuable for an organization that you don't make it to that layoff list. So one example that I use with uh, all of my students over in class is picture yourself as the head of the household that makes it just, you know, for the, for the sake of argument, that makes a thousand dollars a month. And every month there's some kind of bills that are due and your budget is airtight, right? You got X amount for food, X amount for entertainment, and there's no room in that budget to budge. Next thing you know, your hours get cut. So now you're 25% less money. So what are you going to cut? Are you going to cut your food, your monthly food bill? Or are you going to cut Hulu? Are you going to cut Disney Plus? Are you going to cut Netflix, right? There are some things that are more valuable to the family than others. There's no other rhyme or reason behind it other than the value it provides. The same thing happens at work. Are you in a position that can easily be replaced or can easily be done by somebody else? If the answer is yes, chances are you're going to be on that list. So more, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Keep yeah. going. No, I was going to say the more obscure and the more, I don't want to say obscure the job is, but the more um, 
the more you differentiate yourself on your skill level on the higher level for that job, the less likely you will be on that list or at the very least at the very bottom of that list, which means that everything else has to be considered before they talk to you. Yeah, I think there's a practical consideration to this too, is that sometimes that is not possible to be uh, necessary for the organization as a whole, right? If you're in, uh, I don't want to necessarily list specific positions, but if you were in a position where, um, you know, there's, there's other people who could do the same role, mm -hmm. um, just be, just make, and, and the role all together can be eliminated. Just make sure that you're going to be the last one to go. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, and, and show up every day with that in mind. And again, if you, if, if you don't think the job that you're in is worth putting forth that kind of effort, then don't wait for someone to tap you on the shoulder uh, when you're not expecting it and you don't want that to happen. Be proactive and start spending time looking while you, know, you do have more time, <laughs> while you do have that runway. Quit loudly. <laughs> not quite loudly. Well, quit immediately. Quit immediately. <laughs> well, well, wait, no, get, give two weeks. Give two oh, weeks. <laughs> sorry. Yes. But, but yeah. you know, if you're going to quit, quit and then you know do your best job the best job you possibly can until that last minute you walk out the door That's um right. I'll, I'll try to say this quickly because you you mentioned something that i think is also as, as being in staffing for so long what i would look for in um in new business opportunities if we, we would get approached at times and we still do today by companies saying hey we, we we'd like to engage your services we'd like to help you fill this position um and we want to know what's happened up until then, right? Great that you're you're a new organization asking to work with us, but I I want to know why. And if the you know, why could be anything from hey we're, we're growing and we don't have the internal resources to keep up. That's a great reason. Um, you know the the third party we were using before for staffing uh, it wasn't um, doing a good enough job. That's a reason we we love to hear, of course, too. Um, the one that I never want to hear is we've this position's been open for a long time and we haven't been able to fill it for doesn't matter what comes next because I'm no longer really paying attention to what, to what because it's irrelevant. Because if a position has it, you've been able to function allowing a position to stay open for a long period of time, it tells me that position's not very important to you. Right. And I, I can't, you're not compelled. And that's how I was taught it's or evolved to think of selling a good yeah. sales situation is when you have, you can identify what happens if no action is taken and what, and there's a negative impact. So if an organization is able to let a job stay open for, for that period of time, for a long period of time, you know, weeks even, right. Then you have, you go, mm, mm, that's probably not so, so important. So maybe this is a little off topic, but I, I, it was on my mind. If you're in a position where, you know, you, where you think, Hey, if, if I go away, could, is there a negative impact? Yeah. And the answer is no. <laughs> well, then that's probably one where you can't avoid being laid off, right? Like you can do the best, but if they can still function without you, I mean, think of Twitter and that's kind of a running I was joke. Just about to say that. <laughs> Right yeah. now, where all these positions they, they cut, and yet the app still, still functions fine for me. I don't <laughs> still going strong. Laid off twenty seven hundred payrolls, twenty seven hundred. Now I feel bad for those people. Wait, I thought but, it was more than that. What was it more than that? Uh, yeah. Well, last I read, it was twenty seven hundred. I if it's more, still wow, because I don't think they had that many people, right? I don't know. Man. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's. Check well, you look it up. I'm. Box. I'm going to go to the. Um... All right. Let me go to AOL. <laughs> You've got mail. <laughs> I'm going to so, go look it up here real quick. So look, I, I, I don't want. I think we've talked enough about about uh, about this. Um, Ricky, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, just you know, from overall for this perspective, Pete, I, the only thing I want to add is. You know, there's there's people who were laid off. There's people who 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 are, are looking into what's next for them. And all I'm saying is, folks, just just get ready. Just get ready. 
Um, and how you get ready is by, and Pete, I say this every week in our, in our, in our Tuesday morning meetings, build those relationships proactively on LinkedIn. I say it every single week. I know every employee is like, here's Ricky talking about um, uh, uh, building relationships. And this is the reason why when you build those relationships proactively on LinkedIn, the easier your job search is going to be later on. Because if you do it right, if you do it right, if you put in the light work when you don't need a job, when you do need a job, the light work's already going to be done. Because when a position comes up to a recruiter that you've been working on that relationship, that he or she thinks about you first, you've done a great job, and they're going to pick up the phone and give you a call and tap you on the shoulder before it's the other way around. So for those of you that are still out there, still grinding and making sure that you do what you need to for that organization, a, make yourself invaluable that way you're you're less likely to be on that list. And B, start strategically and proactively working on your network. That way, in case you're on that list, your your job search will be just that much easier later on. Great advice. No, no doubt. Um, it looks like 7,500 were laid off. That's what I'm saying. 75. Wow. So so giant, giant number. Um wow. okay. I, so we're gonna go one more question. And yeah. and we'll we'll wrap up for today. And this one, I I don't even think I it should be necessary to say uh, to ask out loud, but I'm going to anyway. Yes, because Pete, someone... no a one sauce for steaks. We talked about that already, so, man. It's as, no you're going to find it as, as about about the same line along oh, okay. the same lines. <laughs> so apparently, someone had listened to us talking about asking for a raise or or read you know, one of the blog articles we have on Zengig mm -hmm. about that. Um, and, and then said, so the question is, I was ready to go ask for a raise. We just had a layoff. Should I, should I wait? Um, yes, <laughs> yes, just, yes. Wait. No, no. Do, you know what? Perfect timing. Perfect yeah. timing. Actually walk into your boss's office in the middle of your boss laying somebody off. Just walk in and say, Hey, excuse me, or Margaret. Hey, can I get a raise in front of Margaret? Okay. So I'm just kidding. Don't do cl that. Clearly not. Um, <laughs> And so I, I don't, maybe it was, I don't know if it was a serious question. We'll take it as serious um, uh, because someone asked. And if they really need to know that, and it came in just a couple of days ago. So I wanted to bring it up <laughs> today while we could. Please don't do it in that moment. Give, let it simmer a little bit. Um, wait until, you know, if, it ha if, if you had a recent layoff, check back in January. See how yes. things are going. <laughs> yes, yes. Unless, unless you're looking for a fast pass version of getting on that list you didn't come on. Because <laughs> as soon as you go in and ask for a raise while they're doing layoffs, I'm pretty sure you're going to be added to that list. Yeah, it's like, just that's yeah. a bad. You, 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 have to, you have to read the room and you have to know the situation that, that you're in when you're uh, going to do something like that. So there, there's, a, there's lots of times where it's appropriate and you should do it. Um, in, in one of the pieces of advice, I know that, uh, that we've given, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to when to ask for a layoff first, try to understand how your company handles those things in general, understand yep. what the history is. And, uh, is there a normal time frame that, um, um, that raises are given in. Did I say that the wrong way? You uh, said when you went to ask for a layoff. I, I did. Uh, <laughs> I did say when. So let, let me let I've me never, undo I've never that. Done that Pete. When, when it's time to ask for a raise, yeah. uh, just look at the history of of the organization if you can and understand uh, what um, you know is. Is there a normal time frame? Is the companies do that um, sometimes once a year? Is there a systematic way that it's done? And then try to time it uh where it where it makes sense uh, yeah. along yeah if, with, with whatever you can just be armed with information to help you determine when the, the best timing is so um sorry for making a mess of that statement no 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 it's okay because it, it's it's that's important for people to know pete it 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 really is know the room read the room know the room if they're laying off that means they don't have any more but any more money in the budget actually they have to cut whatever they currently plan for in that year, in that budget, there's a reason for that layoff. And what he said is hundred percent true. Get to know your company, get to know its tempo as far as when it gives out raises, the best time to ask for a raise should not be at the downturn of the fiscal calendar of the fiscal calendar of the organization. Right. To be honest, 
the best time to ask for a raise is right before their Christmas season where they need valuable people even more, whatever Christmas season that is, right? And I use that in air quotes, right? Because that's where most retail stores really get their best bang for their buck. For example, I used to work at um, a Sears Home Improvements in the home improvement business from, from the November until February, it was dead. It was that because who's going to replace a roof during Christmas? Nobody. So it, it's we always plan ahead of that. And nobody asked for a raise. You want to know when they started asking for a raise in spring, right? Right when it was getting you know really uh, thick. So you have to know the uh, the uh, financial tempo for your business and act and act accordingly and ask accordingly. But never ever ever write during or right after a uh, a layoff. I almost said right before, but that would that would imply that you know it's coming. Right. I think I think we've I think we've addressed that as thoroughly as 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 we need to. No, we need five more hours, Pete. This is great stuff. That's it. <laughs> OK, Spanish. well, thank we should do it in Spanish. So we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to go back to our, our Friday morning. You you have you have coffee and you have lots of, of sun and heat out in, um yes. in sunny Florida today. So in December, that's right. In December. So we're, maybe white Christmas will we have two weeks. Uh, <laughs> Three weeks, three weeks left. Maybe we'll get lucky this year. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll get lucky. If there's a white Christmas in Florida, the next show is going to be what's happening to the world. Because, That's right. Oh my God. So That's yeah. right. Well, you never know these days. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I, I wouldn't rule it out. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I um, appreciate your insight as always. If you've been listening this far, thank you as well. We would love for you to um, ask questions if you have them. We like answering them. Uh, it, when, whenever we, we can help and check out zengig.com for, for uh, answers on pretty much every topic related to, uh, career advice. We um, love feedback on that too. So, um, let us know how we're doing. And of course, rate us, rate us That's with right. five stars. We love that too. Let us know. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good one. Bye mom. <laughs>